All right, let's take a look at a really, really complicated polynomial equation and see if we can make some progress and find all of its roots. Let me just remind you that if we're looking at generic polynomial equations, equations that aren't just quadratic, that are pretty straightforward, or ones that don't easily factor, in general, they're really hard to solve. So what we're about to do here is not easy, and in fact, require many, many steps. So just be patient. Look at this. It's a fourth degree polynomial. It's quite long. x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus x squared plus 16x minus 20 equals 0. Whew! Just saying it takes an hour. Now, we want to solve this by finding all the roots. So what I want to do is I want to actually uh, see if I can look at the roots. Well, let's consider the rational roots first. We know by the rational root theorem that if there are going to be any rational roots, they're going to be of the following flavor. They're going to be factors of this number divided by factors of the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient, by the way, is 1. So we're only looking at plus or minus 1's in the denominator. So all we've got to do is look at the factors of the 20. And so what are they? I shall write them down. What are all the factors of 20? Well, there's plus or minus 1. That's always a factor of any number. There's plus or minus 2. Uh, 3 is not a factor, but uh, 4 is. And so is 5. 6 is not a factor, nor is 7, nor is 8, nor is 9, but 10 is. And the next factor after that is 20 itself. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Notice, by the way, in each case I have a plus or minus. So there's a plus 1, minus 1 we have to check. A plus 2, a minus 2. A plus 4, a minus 4, and so forth. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There are 12 possible candidates for rational roots. None of them might be roots, but if they're going to be rational roots, it has to be one of those by the rational root theorem. So uh, what do we do? Well, we can actually take the graphing calculator, and we can actually graph this function, y equals this quartic. And what we can do is we can look at the graph of that and see how many times we see it crossing the x-axis. And when we do that, we see that it crosses at um, two places. And one seems to be near 1, and one seems to be near negative 5. So it looks like 1, so there's positive 1, that was one of our candidates. And negative 5, that was another candidate, seemed to actually pan out. And so now we can check this by either doing synthetic division or polynomial long division, whatever you like, to see if we actually take, well, if, if 1 is going to be a root by the fundamental theorem, that means x minus 1 would have to be a factor. Similarly, if negative 5 is a root, that would imply that x minus negative 5, or x plus 5, would be another factor of this. And so we can actually do the polynomial long division, or if you'd like, synthetic division, and see if these two uh, pieces go into this polynomial evenly or not. If they go in evenly, then we know that, in fact, we have hit roots. In this case, by the way, it's like one of these cooking shows where I've actually worked this out in advance. It turns out that, yes, these both do go into it. And when you do either synthetic division or long division of polynomials, what we see is uh, what's left over when you factor these guys out is x squared plus 4. So in fact, this long expression can be factored into this nice expression. So let me actually copy that down right here so we can look at it. And so what I see here is an x minus 1 times x plus 5 times x squared plus 4 equals 0. That's exactly what this equals when you actually check all this stuff. All right, so all we have to do now is factor, is factor this. Well, factoring this is not so bad. Let's just solve it, in fact. Let's actually just solve it. I'm going to use a different color, though, of course. So I've got x squared equals negative 4. So I'm going to take plus or minus the square root. So I've got positive negative square root of negative 4. Now, that's not going to be a real number, but I was asked to find all the roots. It didn't say all the real roots. I've got to find all the roots. Some of these might actually be imaginary. They might be complex numbers. And in fact, this, these are going to be, because if I write this as positive negative square root of 4 times square root of minus 1, then I see 
positive, negative, and then the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of minus 1 is i, 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 i. So I've got two imaginary, I've got two imaginary solutions, x equals 2i and x equals negative 2i, and then I've got the real solutions, uh, either this equals 0, which means x equals 1, or this equals 0, x equals negative 5. And so I see I have four solutions, two of them are real, x equals 1, x equals negative 5, and two of them actually are imaginary. x equals 2i, x equals negative 2i. Put them all together, what do you got? You've got all the roots of this. Pretty cool. A lot of work, but we did it.